So here we are in section 16.2, deriving Shockley Reed Hall. Uh, we'll do this in a couple of steps. So the first step is to deal with trap assisted recombination rates. In the previous section, we introduced the uh, concept of capture rates and cap uh, scattering cross sections. And we want to relate those physical properties to how electrons actually uh, uh, decrease in time and how holes are increasing or decreasing in time. So we're checking for trap assisted uh, recombination rates. So you see the process here, the fundamental thing we're after is an electron being destroyed uh, by a hole. And that happens in here where an electron goes into the trap gets trapped, a hole comes up and cancels out the electron. Okay, we will dissect this process in more, in more detail and derive some recombination rates. All right, let's do that. So the overall process consists of two components and each component has two steps. All right, so the first one is the electron um, reduction and a hole reduction, meaning an electron is destroyed and a hole is destroyed. And that's process one, process three as indicated here. And what it's always useful to do in you considering a, any scattering calculations, if you ever take a course on quantum mechanics on uh, calculating scattering rates or uh, calculating transitions between states, it's always very useful to define initial and final states. All right, so the initial state here is an electron being in the conduction band, a hole being in the valence band, and the final state is the destroyed hole and the destroyed electron. So we're just being very explicit about what you start with and what you end up with. And the overall is of course one process that we're after. All right, there's another process we're after where we start out, oh, I'm sorry, where we end up with a hole being created and an electron being created. It's sort of the reverse, right? Before on the left, we destroyed an electron and destroyed a hole. Now we're creating an electron and creating a hole. That's the final state. This comes out of an electron being in the conduction uh, valence band, hopping into the trap, getting captured there, and then hopping up into the conduction band. All right, so this one hole created in the valence band and one hole created in the conduction band, that forms the one reverse item, if you will, of the one destroying an electron and the hole. All right, so that's the thing we're overall that we're after. We're looking at electrons and holes, but we haven't really considered what is happening to the trap. And the details of what's happening in the trap is going to allow us to calculate overall rates of electrons um, being reduced and holes being reduced, etc. All right, so the way to do that is really being very explicit about the existence and the behavior and the temporal behavior of these traps. So we're going to divide out these four processes into electron and trap processes and into hole and trap processes. Okay, so on the left, we see one electron being reduced from the conduction band and one electron being created in the conduction band, mediated by a trap. The word hole doesn't show up in this description. On the right, we see one hole being reduced from, uh, uh, from the valence band and one hole being created in the valence band. Again, hole destruction, hole creation, mediated by a trap. No electron involved in that discussion as such. Okay, so let's focus on these transitions. Again, initial, final states, but be very careful about it and see if we can derive some rates that relate the electrons to traps and the holes to traps. Okay, let's again dissect this more carefully. We're going to look first at one electron being reduced from the conduction band. Let's be explicit about the initial state and the final state again. So, what does the initial state have to be? Well, there has to be an electron in the conduction band, and there has to be an empty trap in the middle. 
Okay, so it's a hole occupied trap and an electron in the conduction band. The final state is an electron that is destroyed in the conduction band and an electron sitting in the trap. So we go from a empty trap to a filled electron trap. We're going over here from a electron existing to an electron being destroyed, initial and final. This is effectively involving, if you will, two particles if you want to interpret it that way. Okay? We're going to look at these as populations of traps and uh, electrons. Okay, we can assign some numbers now. We have n electrons in the conduction band. We're going to have hole-filled empty traps. We designate those with PT, hole-filled traps. And we're associating a capture coefficient, an electron capture coefficient for a trap that is empty. An empty trap that is going to capture an electron has a capture coefficient Cn. Okay. Now, we're going to do the same thing here on the similar process on the right-hand side, but now for an electron being created. What's the initial process? Well, there must be an electron sitting in the trap being pushed up or getting excited into the conduction band. So the final state is that there's an empty trap and an electron in the conduction band. So we go from full trap into empty trap and from a non-existing electron into a filled electron state. All right, let's assign some numbers here. Well, if we go from an empty electron state to a full electron state, that means the state at least must be open. So it must not be occupied. That means it must be open or free, and that is 1 minus the Fermi function in the conduction band. Remember, we calculated previously the Fermi function. That is the occupation of electrons in states. Well, not being occupied means 1 minus f, because the maximum value of f is 1, is the probability of occupi occupation. So 1 minus being occupied is open. All right. We also have a number of electron filled traps, n, t, n capital T, number of electrons in traps. All right. And we're going to emit these electrons from the trap. So we have an electron emission coefficient. Okay, so these are now uh, some numbers that occupy states. So PT is a, a number of uh, hole filled or empty traps, and NT is a number of electron filled traps. So these are numbers, total numbers. Okay. And we have, as discussed in the previous section, an electron capture coefficient and an electron emission coefficient, okay? And in the later segment, we will relate those two physical constants, or uh, these two, uh, two elements here. But let's just li live with them for now and look at the electron uh, rates that we can devise. All right, so if we are now looking at the blue process on the left, what are we doing? we are destroying an electron in the conduction band. If we look at the rate of change of electrons in the conduction band, we are reducing the number of electrons. Therefore, we have a minus sign here. We're reducing the, the number of electrons in the conduction band by multiplying the number of electrons with the capture coefficient and the, the number of uh, occupied um, whole, whole occupied traps. Okay? So that gives us this term here. This will reduce the number of electrons in the conduction band. On the right, we're creating electrons. That's why we have a plus sign here. And we do that by emission of electrons from occupied traps where we have a number of Occupy traps into empty states up here. And so the rate 
at which that will happen is indicated in here. So I hope those numbers make sense and they connect to the fundamental transitions that we consider in, in these processes. Okay. Now let's look at the whole side. Here we had indicated we want to <coughs> pardon me. We want to reduce a hole from the valence band, so we want to destroy a hole and we want to create a hole. All right, so let's look at these processes also a little bit more carefully. So, what was the original thinking about this? We want to look at the left process number three first, one hole being reduced from the valence band. And the way we sketched it was the initial state is an electron sitting here in the uh, trap, hopping down into a hole and therefore leaving an, uh, a trap, uh, empty trap here and destroying a hole. All right, this notation or this thinking involves an electron and a hole. So it's an electron focused point of view. Let's look at it slightly differently and we want to have a trap and hole focused point of view. So let's change this point of view slightly and say we start out from an electron that is sitting in the valence band because that is the particle we want to destroy. Okay, And the electron hops into a, sorry, the hole hops into an electron occupied trap. Okay, so now we're talking about a hole doing something with a trap that has a certain state. That is an hole and electron point of view. It doesn't involve counting electrons anymore. It only involves the particles we're interested in. We're interested in the occupation of the trap state and the occupation of the hole state. Okay, so we're going from an, a hole uh, being uh, uh, present to a hole being destroyed, and we go from a trap being filled to a trap being empty. All right, so with that, we can find some decent rates. We count the number of uh, holes that are in the valence band. We count the number of electron occupied traps. Again, that's not an electron property, that's a, uh, that's a trap property. And we look at a capture coefficient by which these holes are being captured. Again, this is a hole focused point of view. Okay. Let's look at the reverse process, one hole being created in the valence band. Okay. So the point of view that we had sketched originally was an electron hopping into a trap. And we're ending up with a hole and an, hole, an electron filled trap. Again, we want to introduce a trap and hole focused point of view. So we'll modify the picture just slightly. The initial state will be a hole filled trap. And the final state will be, uh, uh, and the, I'm uh, sorry, part of the initial state is a non existing hole. And in this process, we can then go from a hole not existing to a hole existing, and a trap being empty to go a trap getting full. So we have clear transitions between initial and final state. All right, and of course, we can begin to assign rates. So we have an whole occupied traps. We have an emission coefficient for emitting such a hole out of a trap. And we need to have an available hole st uh, state, meaning there must be a place for a, a hole to go to. And that would be the occupancy of the valence band, okay? So Fv. 
All right. So again, similar to what we did on the left side, we can connect these rates to, uh, to these, pro these processes to a rate. And we are after the occupancy of holes in the valence band. And there's these two fundamental processes here. When we uh, destroy a hole, that means it will reduce the number of holes. We have a not minus sign here. And the, the process is that the, uh, we need to have a number of holes that are going to be destroyed. And they're being captured by a trap. And we have NT traps available. So that's this rate here. We reduce the number of holes by capturing them into a number of available traps that are electron filled, NT. By the similar token, we increase the number of holes. We create holes that will have a positive sign on the rate by emitting holes from hole filled traps into empty states. That's this rate. Okay? So we have two rate equations that we obtain now that are trap assisted. It involves the counting of the traps and the counting of the electrons on this side. And it involves counting holes and traps on the right side. Of course, the traps are the mediator of this process. But these are the two um, opposite processes um, that exist. One here is the opposite of two. And three is sort of the inverse process of four. And that will be important in the next segment when we will connect capture and emission. Because capture here is related to emission in these two uh, um, opposing processes. Again here, capture and emission, are they have to be related to each other in some shape or form. And that will be the next step. But we couldn't have done that if we didn't look into the details of the traps with their partners. Electrons on the left side, holes on the right side. Okay, so we have trap assisted recombination rates and now we're going to relate these uh, capture and emission uh, uh, to each other. That will be the next segment. So, thank you.